for, uh, this message is for you. And I believe it's from the Lord. Because I talked with this message and I said, Lord, this is very elementary. And I said, they probably, probably preached it before. And he just indicated the Holy Spirit said, I want you to share it with your congregation. Amen. 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 Today, Amen. Amen. This message. In, uh, in, in, in verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth. That's Matthew chapter 5. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? For it is good for nothing. Somebody say good for nothing. Good for nothing. But to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And then he goes on to say, You are the light of the world. Matter of fact, this is Jesus speaking. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16 says, Now, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. And then I like to read verse 20 of that same chapter. For I say unto you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this service today. It has been rich. It has been deep, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, because I believe that this word is going to encourage individuals as well as this body of Christ. And Lord, I pray that you will give me the anointing to get it across clearly and plain. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for all that you have done in the past, the special singing, the worship, all the, pe the people that's giving. We just thank you, Lord, for being, ha uh, having that, been able to to be able to do that in the service. And we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may, you may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our text for today is about people who love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. People who love Jesus. Jesus defines his followers as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He said, you are, you are the salt of the earth. Yes. He did not say, someday in the future you will be the salt of the earth. Amen. Amen. Jesus told them that they were already the salt of the earth. And he also said, you are the light of the world. Yes, yes, yes. Again, Jesus did not say, someday in the future, if you do all the things that I tell you to do, you will be the light of the world. Amen. Jesus did not say, if you work hard all your life, you will be the light of the world. Mm -hmm. They are already the light of the world. Now, I just want to consider just a few moments here what it means to be the salt and the light of the world. Amen. First of all, what does it mean to be the salt of the earth? Jesus was complimenting. Somebody say complimenting. Compliment. His followers. When he said to them, you are the salt of the earth. In the ancient world, salt was a valuable commodity. Workers were paid with salt. An interesting footnote is that the word salary is derived, is derived from the word salt. Person wanting to buy something in the ancient world would pay for it with salt. In the same way we use money today, people would treasure salt as we might value gold or silver. Salt, such a valuable 
perishable commodity because it was used to preserve food in the days before refrigeration. Yes. Now, I'm a little older, but I, that, that's even before my day. <laughs> would butcher their own meat often and they would use salt to preserve it. You remember those days, Brother Hayden? Now, I'm not calling you old. But you remember the days back in the South and they had hog killing days? Oh, yes. Amen. They had smoke houses. You remember those. Some of you said, yeah. Yeah. All right. Salt was also used, now just think about this, salt was also used to clean out Sears wound. Can you imagine putting salt and using that as an antiseptic? <coughs> Sounds painful, doesn't it? But clean out a wound with salt was very effective in fighting infection. Perhaps the most important thing about salt is that in its purest form, it never loses its taste. Salt will always be salt. Yes. <laughs> salt does not get stale or lose its flavor if it's stored for a long, when it's stored for a long period of time. And so it never loses its flavor. Amen? So, this is the reason that Jesus, amen, was calling his followers the salt of the earth. In other words, Jesus says, once you accept me and become one of my followers, amen, I want to let you know, amen, that you are committed. There's no turning back. You are the salt of the earth. Now, what happens then when someone decides to no longer want to be a disciple or a follower of Christ? Now, I'm not talking about a doctrine here of eternal security or uh, the doctrine of once saved, always saved. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about we, amen, we turn back and we don't do what we're supposed to be doing as followers of Jesus. See, there are no more value. They are, more, they are no more value than salt that has lost its taste and gone bad. So what, is, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, listen. Amen. It's worse than what we think it is when we don't do what we're supposed to do and let our light shine and be that salt. Amen. 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 We have lost yes. the value yes. of what we're supposed to be doing, and that is yes. go. go. Teach all nations. Yes. Amen. Go and be a witness. Yes. You see, in Jesus' days, the salt that was not pure salt like we have today but it was harvested with other natural substance that could not that could go bad. When that happened, the salt was useless. There was no way to restore the lost taste. But if salt has lost its taste, Jesus said, what did Jesus say? He said, How can its saltiness be restored? The only thing to do with such salt was to throw it away because it's no longer valuable. It was worthless. It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under with foot. Underfoot. Trampled underfoot. Jesus said that faith, our faith that has gone bad or become inactive. Amen. You see, it has fallen by the wayside and we've become useless. Come on, somebody. This is what Jesus is saying. He said we become useless. But he didn't. He said, you are the salt of the earth. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be good for nothing for the kingdom work. Now, I want you to keep this in the right perspective. Now, Jesus is not condemning you. He's not, amen, talking about his creation of you being worthless as a human being or an individual. But he's talking about what he's called you to be. If you are a disciple of Christ, hallelujah, you are indeed the salt of the earth. 
Amen. Why? Because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. You belong to the family of God. Amen. Amen. You've been washed in the blood. Amen of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have been redeemed yes. because you are making a difference. Amen. Because you are a believer. And not only did he say you are the salt, but he said you are the light of the world. Yes. Jesus told his father like a city built on a hill that cannot be hid. Again, Jesus was complimenting. Somebody say complimenting. Complimenting. His father. Yes. A city built on a hill is seen for miles. In all direction, yes. Jesus is instructing his followers to allow their light to shine in a dark world. Amen. A light hid under a bushel basket isn't seen by anyone, and it serves no real purpose. Such a light would burn itself out without anyone ever noticing it. Jesus said, Amen, no one, Amen, no one after lighting the lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand. Yes, in other words, what he's saying, amen, what we do in the name of Jesus, amen, it ought to be visible to other people living in our community and world and not hidden where no one can see it. Amen? amen. I can remember one night, amen, that Amen. It, 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 it happened, you know. I was preaching a revival years ago in a place called Bridgeville, Delaware. And I was preaching, Dr. Gray, and all of a sudden it was night and a storm came up. And, uh, you know, when the storm came up, amen, the lights went out. Right in the middle of my message. I mean, it was so dark you couldn't even see your hand in front of you. And so, you know, and so the pastor, he was sort of kind of, he, he, he was sitting on the pulpit. I don't know how he got out the pulpit or the platform and without, without falling or stumbling in the dark. Uh -huh. But he happened to go into the kitchen in the cafeteria. Uh -huh. And while he was in the kitchen, he found some candles. Candle. He found some candles and he found quite a few of them. They must have just had a... Uh, a, a, a Christmas Eve uh, candlelight service or something. But he came out with quite a few candles. And uh, you, could, uh, you couldn't you could see each other that well, but all of a sudden you begin to see one candle is lit out in the congregation. Then two, then three, then four. You know, all of them, amen, they were holding the candle. And pretty soon, you know, the candle wasn't that big, so, amen, we couldn't prolong the service. So what we did, we continued to have, we had a candlelight service. Amen. amen. I stopped preaching and we started praying. Amen. <laughs> so that, that, gives you a, that gives you a priority there. Praying is more important than preaching. In that situation. Amen. They were praying that the storm... And the lights would come back on. But the harder we prayed, the, 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 the more it rained. I mean, it rained sheets of rain. And, and, and I'll tell you. But, during that particular service, amen, it struck me. The thought came to me and realized, it made me realize that what it means to be the light of the world. You see. And... If we're not careful, we will let temptation overcome us in any given day. And it's easy to play it safe, amen, to play it safe, uh -huh. and to be good Christians just in the church. You hear what I'm saying? Just in the church. You see, it's a lot harder to venture out in faith into the storms of this world. Because that night, the rain was raining so hard, people were about to leave. I mean, church was over. Come on, let me tell you something. When a storm hit, I don't care what you do. Church is over. People want to go home. But when they, I could see the candles moving towards the door, 
But when they got towards the door of the church, the rain was coming out like sheets of wind. They could not go anywhere. Even though, amen, they had the candles lit, they could not go out into the storm. Amen. And, and you see, you and I, amen, we're the light. But many times, amen, we don't want to go outside the rims of the church into the storm. And to let our light shine. Do you get what I'm saying? Amen. amen. You see, amen, like a beam of light shining through the darkness. Amen. We are followers of Jesus Christ. We stand out. And we are visible for all the world to see. Amen. But our temptation is to allow our light to shine only to among those of here of us inside our church. And while we ignore people outside of the church, we enter, amen, this building to serve yes. and to sell, I mean, to celebrate yes. our relationship with Christ and yes. celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive yes. and he lives today in our heart. Yes. We come to encourage one another. We come to hear the word. Yes. We come to worship God. But when we leave these, these doors, we leave out into a world to serve. That's not taking away serving each other in the church, but we're to serve humanity. Hallelujah. And as I think about that, as I think about that, I think about some of the things that we as a Silver Spring Church of God, we took advantage of every opportunity to let our light shine. And I commend you for that. We've had people in the last six months to lose loved ones. I think about Sister Sharon's family, Apostolini, and how the church embraced them and how that they were ministered to during the time of the loss of their loved one. I think about Sister Sharon. I think about her mother. I think about all of her relatives. And they were just amazed, amen, how you, the Silver Spring Church of God, amen, you let your light shine, amen, you were the salt of the earth. You made a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think about, amen, Sister Carlita's family. How you, amen, you came together, amen, and you ministered to that family, amen, and we received a beautiful card, amen, from your loved one thanking the church, amen, and how, amen, uh, the church showed up by numbers, amen, amen, to support and to reach out in love. I think about that, amen. I think about, amen, just for Charmaine and her ex-husband, they went on to be with the Lord and how the church came together, Amen. And ministered and reached out to that family. Hallelujah. I think about Sister Caldwell. Amen. Our associate pastor. How you came together. Amen. And how you ministered to that family. And you made a difference. I think about Trevor Ross Blue Chuck. As you went and you reached out to him and his family when he lost his brother. I think about that. Amen. When you, amen, went beyond the call of duty. I think about Pastor Rowe. Amen. As he lost his mother. Amen. Everybody said, amen, that we're praying for you. Amen. We praying that God will give you the strength. I think about, amen, Sister Diane, as you stood up here in this church. Amen. And you testified how God sent the people to minister to you. I'm talking about the Silver Spring Church of God. And you're to be commended. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. You let some sharp tongue evangelist come through here. Don't know nobody. Don't know what the church is doing. And preach condemnation on the members and friends that make up this congregation. Amen. You don't have to accept that. You don't have to accept that. Amen. I'm here to tell you, my friend. Amen. You do love God. You are. Amen. You let your righteousness exceed that of the pride and the Pharisee. I told you now. But you know why Jesus said in verse 20 of that same chapter? He said we can't even enter in the 
kingdom of God if our righteousness does not exceed the scribe and the Pharisees. I want, I want to tell you who they were. They were the elite. Of that day, they were they were men that people looked up to. They saw them. They had a habit of of just like if you go on Tyson's Corner or one of the busiest places in the world, and they would wear their robe, and they were standing there like this. Can I tell you what Jesus thought about it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, when you pray, come on. Don't, look, don't be like the Pharisees. They love to pray. Standing up praying, looking all sanctimonious and be praised of men. And they're all their repetitiveness and the praises that they, you know, they repeat. He said, but when you pray, come on. Yes. He said, go in fear. Oh. And that doesn't take away praying in public. No. You don't understand. Yes. He said, but go. Amen. Just you and God. Yes. And then go into your prayer flowers. Yes. In your secret place. Yes. 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 And listen, this is what blows your mind. I have studied this. Come on. He didn't say the God who hears, but he, he said the God who was. See, a lot of different in hearing and seeing. The indicating, Amen. He sees where your heart is. He sees, Amen, that you love it. He said, you don't have to have a room book to pray and love and reach out like this church has. You did it because you love God. It came from compassion and mercy. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. And you were obedient to God. Come on, somebody.
brothers and sisters of this church could have stayed home too. But you decided to be the salt and the light. You felt like that you could make a change in the little corner of your world. And this is what Jesus is continuing to ask you to do. And the follow of Christ is being the salt and the light of the earth. You are indeed. Not later on down the line when you get more mature or I get more mature, but right now you make a difference. Yes. Amen. Right He's talking about you, saints. He's talking about you. He's talking about you and me. We are the salt, the light. We're called to make a difference in our world. Jesus told his followers, you are the salt of the earth. You're the light of this world. Let us stand together. Father, we thank you today for this body of Christ, the Silver Spring Church of God. I just felt like, Lord, I've shared what you want me to share. Because sometimes, Lord, we get weary in well-doing. We even go as far as sometimes to take each other, sometimes for granted. We do. We do. We just don't realize, Lord Jesus, amen, the effectiveness and what this church accomplished. Well, somebody may say, well, Lord, should never seat be filled. Should people be waiting to come into this church to get their needs met? Amen. Oh, God. Yes, we, just, we, we, we desire that. We desire that. Every seat to be filled. Yes, Most of the devil's But right now, Lord, we don't want, you don't want me to dwell on that. You want me to tell the people of God it matters not, the numbers matter not to you at this point. To let them know they hold their head up, Lord. Strengthen their weevil, their feeble needs. Strengthen them in every area of their life, Lord. If there are those that are struggling here today, God, we just want to remind you of how they reached out to others. And they want to continue to be used. Lord, we just know we can see the signs of the time. There's trouble everywhere. Oh, God, wars and rumors of wars. Crime. There's earthquake. Weather. Weather impairment. All these things, Lord. It's just a it's showing us, amen, it won't be long. Hallelujah. And Father, you said occupy until you come. In other words, continue to do, do the work of God. Yes. Well, we have so many people, Lord God, that want to come through and put the church down. We'll let them know that they're not making much of an impact. We need to do this, and we need to do that, and we need to do this and that. But you sent me here today to tell our brothers and sisters, amen, that they're doing a mighty fine job. Amen. And Lord, that you're pleased with their reaching out. Oh yes, we're human. We make mistakes. Yes, Lord, we, amen, sometimes we lean on the arms of the flesh. But God, thought you look at the whole picture. You look, I heard yesterday, a man with tears in his eyes. He had tears in his eyes when he made this statement, he said many times we don't look at our brothers and sisters or the church or a situation. We look at it from man's perspective. We look at it from man's perspective. But he said, Lord, if we could ever look at it from your perspective. Your perspective. Look at it from a heavenly view instead of an earthly view. Oh, we would be so much more healthy. Yes. We would be so much, amen, just effective in what we're doing. Because, Lord, we're all going to go through struggles. Yes. We're all going to go through trials, Lord. Yes. And this too shall pass. Yes. Because you have ordained us. Yes. Yes. And you've appointed us yes. to be where we are. Yes. And Father, Lord, I pray that we'll realize that we're yes. part of a team. Yes. Yes. Yes, there are a few teams that has a superstar. And we have a superstar, and that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 But to be more effective,
effective, Lord, and to be more powerful, we work as a team. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because each of us brings something to the table. Amen. We contribute something. So help us to realize that, Lord. And Father, Lord, I pray, God, that we'll leave this place encouraged today. Oh, I know the devil's standing outside the door somewhere trying to discourage somebody before we get out of the parking lot. But, Lord, I pray that the saints of God today that heard this message to say, Get out of my life, Steve. Take your weapon somewhere else. Because I'm not buying what you have to say. Because Jesus said that I am the light of the world. I'm the salt of the earth. And Lord, that pleases Him. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.